Welcome back to the Drawing Board of Truth. In this episode, we will examine the so-called Christian movie, Do You Believe? That's right. And this theater here, now showing is Do You Believe? The Christian movie. And of course, as with every movie theater, we have featuring blasphemous abominations all day, every day, for all ages. That's right, so that's the first thing we'll address here, movie theaters. Uh, I mean, that's what they do. They have every manner of blasphemous filth all day, every day, all ages, animated and <clears throat> for the children and, and all of the other things that you might desire for your entertainment. Now, so first of all, you're a professing Christian. What are you doing uh, going in here patronizing this place? Do you not realize what movie theaters are? Satanic temples full of idols? Featuring murder, violence, hatred, uh, nudity, homosexuality, perversion of all kinds and then but they it's just amazing they they put these so-called christian movies up on that screen and they've got people from churches and youth groups just flooding the place well let me ask you if this was a mosque would you show up because they have a christian quote unquote christian movie showing you show up walk through the door, put your offering in. That what you would do if it was a, a mosque? How about a Buddhist temple? How about, how about the Hindu or the Sikh temple? They put a screening of the Christian movie. You going? You think this is some other god that they're serving here? <clears throat> hmm? Think this is some other god, uh, is this not the same, you know, this is the Baphomet statue here, representing Satan. Isn't that the same God that they're all serving? You think all this wicked, filthy idolatry that movie theaters are, are showcasing, it's not the same God as the pagan idols of, of these other temples? Uh-oh, uh-oh, wait a minute. I can smell the fishy smell already. Now, don't try to break out the red herrings now and already start making excuses in your mind. Just stick with me, but don't, don't break out the red herrings already. Oh, we buy gas from wicked people. We buy groceries from wicked people. You're using a computer made by Bill Gates or Mac or whatever it is. Now, don't, don't start with the justifications. It's not going to cut it. There's nothing of necessity in a movie theater. All right, if, if, if the only way that I could expose the filth of this world or expose movies is I had to go into the movie theater for internet access, I guess I'd go in there for internet access if I had to. But I don't have to go in there and do a thing. I don't have to put my offering in their pagan bucket. And neither did you, do you, and you ought to know better if you're a Christian right off the bat. So that's issue number one. Okay, moving on from there. I'm going to do things a little differently this time, and I'm going to go ahead and bring out Scripture references in the beginning. Then as we go along, we will develop the relevance of the references. So... Starting with uh, James 4.4, 4, Adulterers and adulteresses, know you not the friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And Corinth, uh, 2 Corinthians 6.14.16, 6, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? 
And what agreement hath the temple of God with the temple of idols? But you are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Matthew 7, 6 says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearl before swine, lest they trample them under your feet, under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Now in Mark 4, 14 through 19, we have the explanation of the parable of the seed and the sower. The sower soweth the word, Jesus said. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure for, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And lastly, these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Now, lastly, meaning those are the three categories of the word becoming unfruitful. And of course, as you may know, if you've ever read the gospel, then uh, the fourth category, praise God, that should be us bearing fruit. All right. So that being said, let's look firstly at the creators of Do You Believe? All right, this review comes from the American Catholic because surprise, surprise, the screenwriters Carrie Solomon and Chuck Konzelman are Catholics. There you go. And this is a Christian movie. Is the Catholic Church, the Christian Church, Catholic religion, Christian? Some of you may not know the difference. We'll uh, uncover that. So they wanted to become better Catholics uh, as they were uh, working for years, they were working with the likes of Sylvester Stallone, and uh, he says he was very impressed with their humility and desire to become better Catholics. They did all the right things, helping those in need and going to Mass and confession as much as possible. All the right things. And, uh, you know, that's, that's back when they were doing filthy movies full of lust, profanity, blasphemy. Uh, all that garbage, violence, and uh, of course, but they were doing all the right things. You know, going to Mass and Confession and making Sly Stallone movies. Of course, that wouldn't be incompatible if you're in a pagan religion. Right? They didn't repent from that, by the way. When they had this great breakthrough from God and they, they had their success with the God's Not Dead movie. That's, you know, their other Christian movie. These Christian filmmakers representing supposedly the God of the Bible. Uh, only problem is they haven't repented and become Christians. Yeah, that's just a slight minor discrepancy there, isn't it? All right, so we're going to key in on just um, going to focus on a few people involved in this project. Uh, let's see here, the rapper, Shwayze, uh, or he's part of the duo Shwayze, Pretty Boy is his name, whatever he goes by, okay, uh, and then Sybil Shepherd. She's in this, a uh, long-time actress. There are other people, Sean Astin, uh, all these people involved in all manner of Hollywood idolatry, wickedness. 
Oh, Delory, uh, De- I'm sorry, Delroy Lindo. He plays the street preacher that confronts the pastor Matthew here and when he has his big breakthrough. And I'm really not even going to get into the story that much. You'll see why. I don't really need to. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I know the excuse is, oh, it doesn't matter that the people involved, it's the content doesn't matter if there are wicked actors playing these roles. Just just stick stick with me here. So, uh, again, just uh, Hollywood actors involved with the usual filth. Sybil Shepard sort of being the queen mother of this uh, blasphemous spiritual adultery here. So we'll focus on her as well as a couple other people involved in the project. Uh, But, okay, so first of all, back to the creators. Okay, so they're Catholics, right? Okay, let's just uh, examine Catholicism here. So just to make sure, give you a quick rundown. In case there was any doubt in your mind, somebody could be representing the true God of the Bible, and they can be uh, involved in this pagan religion at the same time. All right, so what is this? This is a Catholic cardinal, and he is uh, waving his incense censer here. Uh, incense is a, a form of worship. You know, they wave the incense in uh, veneration and honor to what? This is a vial of blood from a dead pope. They put the blood of a pope up on a pedestal and worship it. Hello. This is Catholicism. Worshiping the blood of a dead man, a dead pope, who is just another idolater like this man is. Uh, Whose blood are we redeemed by? <laughs> I mean, it, this is just... Okay, Here, here's... Uh, let's see, let's do this one first. Okay, this is Pope Francis kissing the blood container of Pope John Paul. And then, right after he kisses it, <gasps> there's this amazing... Thing that happens the blood becomes alive again that's what they're doing here they're examining this you can you can search this out check out search engine pull up the articles whatever you want uh, they're examining the fact that Pope Francis may have performed a miracle because he kissed this blood vial here and then the blood liquefied, it became alive after he kissed it. People, this is so blatantly satanic. I don't I don't even know what to say about some of this stuff. But this is Catholicism. I just, just wanted to give you a little rundown here. I mean, it, you could go on and on and on and on, hours and hours, days on end with the with the, the, the history, the idolatry, the Catholic Church is an idolatrous religion. Here is uh, the ex-Pope Benedict and Pope Francis, and they are bowing down before what they call the Black Madonna. It's a just creepy photo, creepy painting, artwork, of supposed to be a black Mary, and this is supposed to be the baby Jesus. This is this is Semiramis, aka Isis, aka Aphrodite, Diana, whatever incarnation you want to call it. It's just a filthy, wicked, satanic idol. And here they are. They go in here and bow down and pray before it. And this is so-called Christianity. <laughs> insanity yep and there they are there are some catholics here and they have their black madonna picture 
Oh, and even uh, Pope John Paul. Now he's being worshipped right along with the Semiramis. Christian religion, huh? And here's Pope Francis and his incense worship before a graven image. There you go. Right before the the idol statue there. And here's supposed to be baby Jesus. This is not <laughs> Jesus Christ. It does not represent Jesus Christ. In fact, the Catholic revised version of their own revised version of the Bible eliminates... The commandment, the Ten Commandments, the Second Commandment, it eliminates it because it says you shall not make any graven image of any creature or man to bow down and worship it. They literally take that out of the Ten Commandments. Check it out. If you don't know that, quick search engine search, you'll find it's a fact. Here is Pope John Paul. Kissing the Quran. The Quran, yes. Muslim religion. Validating that. Why not? They're all idol worshippers. This is all of the devil, people. All of the devil. You see our uh, little image here we have of the satanic church and the, the Baphomet. See that? See the... That's the Baphomet sign with the hand there, the two fingers up like that. And here you have St. Peter. Supposedly St. Peter with the same, same thing. It's not St. Peter. It's a pagan idol again. The uh, sun wheel above his head. I'm going to try to get into too much terminology of the idolatry, etc. I mean, it's just just make it obvious in terms of keeping the time down a little bit here. We won't get off on too much of a rabbit trail there. But, uh, yeah, here again, you see the little fingers, a little baby Jesus, supposedly. Not Jesus. See, same as the Baphomet symbol there. Right out of the church of Satan. Right out of the church of Satan because that's what it is. Okay, so now that we have clearly established that the source of the movie itself is not a Christian source to begin with, from people who do not know Jesus Christ to begin with, and we have this just big blow up of people on the Facebook or whatever else it is telling everybody, oh, you got to see this, my Christian brothers and sisters, see this movie, it's so wonderful. If you haven't noticed, the movie industry and the music industry are wicked. So when they come out with something... That, and don't, don't, yeah, it's an independent film. Oh, yeah, and there's Christian rock music. Come on. It's all the same stuff. It's a satanic deception, people. They, when, when they produce a product that looks just like what the world has done, but then puts some supposed Christian content in it. Do you think it's really meant so, oh, we want to bless the Christian community? Or could it be Satan's way of using something that you are that you like to be entertained with so he can put a false veneer over it of supposed Christianity, put a mask over it, put a disguise over it, so he can sucker you in and get his hook in your jaw? Which one do you think it is? All right, let's look at the star of the film here. Good old Sybil, Sybil Shepherd. I was born a Christian, she said. So right there, it's obviously somebody who doesn't understand the gospel, doesn't know the gospel to begin with. How can you be saved through the 
preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you don't even know what it is. It's impossible to be born a Christian if you have to repent from your sins. Jesus said, Luke 13, 3 and 5, except you repent, you'll all likewise perish. That happened right from the womb, according to Sybil. And, but then she stopped talking to him and praying. Well, she came back to Jesus, and then she got the offer to do the film. And then, what was so wonderful, according to her, when she read the script, she cried four times. She said of the film's message, I felt strongly it was not proselytizing. It was telling human stories about how we're all interconnected and how we all get saved. Did you catch that? She was so moved to tears. Because it was not proselytizing. That's another name uh, for another term for evangelizing. You know, like what Jesus told, commanded us to do in all the world, was not proselytizing. Just telling those human stories about how what? We're all can interconnected. Is that true? Not what the Bible says, is it? You have the children of the devil, the children of God. Scriptures that, that I just read there, totally separated. No fellowship with the temple of idols. No fellowship with an infidel, if you're a Christian. But according to Sybil's gospel, we're all interconnected. And we're all, we all get saved. See that? We all get saved. Of course. And now scores of Christians are just eating it up, or <laughs> professing Christians, church folks, let's say, going into the theaters, eating it up. And I'd say there may be some genuine believers uh, who are getting suckered into this, but your lack of discernment is inexcusable. And just stick with me here, because don't, you know, again, with the, hey, but the, the content of the movie and there there was some there was some truth in there and this and that just stick with me here so again how she's always been a christian sang in the choir had my prayer book for my confirmation by her bed yep that's how she knew she was a christian now what did this movie do for her? It helped her rekindle her relationship with God. Rekindle her relationship with God. Well, if that was the case, then one thing we can bank on for sure is that she has repented then, right? Rekindle the relationship with God, then, then uh, you've repented. You repented from your wicked, filthy sins that you were going on in when you were away from God then, right? Well, here's just one of her projects she's involved with, the L word, the L for lesbian. And so, isn't joining the cast of the L word risky, TV Guide asks? My kids, Ariel and Zach, Clementine, think it's so cool. They were so excited. They were dancing around the house. How do you think they'll feel after they see it? Well, she laughs and then says, After shooting my first sex scene, that's with a woman, of course, I said to my daughter, Don't worry, it won't be embarrassing. She said, Mom, I don't want to know. Well, hmm. Her daughter is ashamed. Well, hey, if there's nothing wrong with being a lesbian, why would her daughter have so much shame? Oh, what's your character like? Phyllis Kroll's an executive vice chancellor of a major university. <laughs> wow. 
well, that's a stretch for that character to be a lesbian then, wouldn't it? Like USC, you know. A uh, major university. Boy, that's very unbelievable, isn't it? And she has a fulfilling heterosexual life. She's raised two daughters and has this wonderful husband. Has this wonderful husband. So, adulterous lesbian character is something that she thinks is worthwhile playing. And don't uh, try, oh, say, uh, but this was before she rekindled her relationship. Guess what? She hasn't repented. No, she hasn't repented. She's still proud of this and supports abortion as well. Find the breaking news release where she comes out and condemns homosexuality and repents in sackcloth and ashes, huh? Yeah, find that. You're not going to find it. And so, talking about working with Jennifer Beals, and then uh, she falls in love with Alice, a radio DJ who's much younger. Yep, it's like that first great love affair when you're 16. I'm obsessed with her, and she dumps me, and I become like a stalker. Wonderful plot line. And then, so exciting, never done a love scene with a woman, and I'm going to just move this filthy, scum, Satan-serving garbage off of the screen. I'm not even going to read what she says after that. All right. And then, did you ever think you were a lesbian? I've wondered about it. To me, sexy is sexy. At various times over my life, I wanted to be open to the possibility of having a woman as a lover. I'm not actively pursuing but, remember this, it's not over yet. Wow, isn't that wonderful? It's not over yet. She might just become a lesbian. There's still hope. All right, here's Schwazy. Schwazy. The Schwazy duo. Now, they're not both in it. It's just this guy here pretty boy and he plays a criminal who gets saved the problem is Schwazy's a criminal now both of them are but he hasn't repented he's a criminal now he needs to reform in this actual real world you know but this is the kind of stuff he does in the real world. This is the song, one, just one of the filthy, wicked songs that he raps, whatever he does. Oh yeah, and don't don't forget now. MTV Music Awards. Of course, he's a part of that. MTV. Satanic entertainment for decades now. So I don't even really want to repeat uh, scenes about sex scenes in a bathroom and all kinds of fornication and filth. And that's, that's what Schwazy's all about there. Just wicked thug rap kind of stuff just your run of the mill satan serving entertainment and no repentance no repentance and of course now you couldn't have a good movie now christian movie remember christian movie you couldn't have a good christian movie soundtrack without the newsboys and I'm telling you, all the exposés I do, I cannot get away from the Billy Graham connection in just about everything. Billy Graham 
and the Catholic Church. If you want to find out something is about the satanic deception of false Christianity, just look for the Billy Graham connection and the Pope will be right alongside of it. Just about every single time. Yeah, here's uh, Anton LaVey. He's, he's also yeah, now, now playing, too. We'll get to him. I know you're probably wondering what Anton LaVey is doing down the corner. But, you know, he's, it's just kind of like he's, he's in the coming attractions, too. They're, uh, do you believe? And then the uh, uh, documentary, maybe, or the, the life story of Anton LaVey. Why not, right? So, you see, I want to zoom in on, now this is the We Believe, that's the title track, Newsboys song on the uh, movie soundtrack. But then it's a collection of songs inspired by the message and mission of Billy Graham. Yes, sir, the message and mission of Billy Graham. All these CCM, CCM does not stand for Contemporary Christian Music, it stands for Corrupting Christianity Ministries. Billy Graham, if some of you are watching now and you do not yet know that this is one of the most wicked men in church history, I will put links to the exposés on Billy Graham that will comprehensively uh, reveal that from his own lips. He says that atheists, Muslims, Hind, uh, Buddhists, all manner of unbelievers are saved and a part of the body of Christ. He is a Satan-serving universalist, preaching doctrines of devils. He affirms Islam, all, all manner of filth and deception, from this wicked man named Billy Graham. And in case you didn't know, this is the Newsboy, Newsboys band, who uh, not only, of course, they're involved with the life and mission of Billy Graham. Remember the, the, the ministry, how did it say that? The message and uh, mission of Billy Graham. His message is doctrines of devils. His mission is spreading doctrines of devils throughout the church, deceiving millions. He's always somehow involved. I mean, he's he's about ready to go into eternity. I mean, he's not personally doing what he has been doing, but he's built up this apostate movement. And uh and when he does die, it will be uh, widely circulated. A lot of his teachings, will it'll just be kind of like a satanic Billy Graham revival. So get ready. You need to know these things to warn people. I'm going to bring out, well, who is this? This is Rob Halford, frontman of Judas Priest blatant Satan worshipers, and professed homosexual. He's got his satanic triton there in his hand. Got his whole uh, satanic priest regalia on there, up on stage. Well, what's he have to do with anything? Well, just one of the acts that the newsboys have uh, played together with in uh, rock festivals. Of course, right, Christians? Yeah. Here's a little article snapshot of the Newsboys. This was before Tate joined the band there. And, uh, it's when Peter Furler, the guy who wore the women's eye makeup all the time, you know, was the front man. They had this... Liberty Disco album and 
of course, Jody Davis has this to say. Back in the 70s when disco originated, the people who were into that would go to these clubs looking for love and acceptance. That's something we have in the church. Yeah, we have that love and acceptance for the homosexuals. And uh, this blogger here has it right. They were homosexual hell holes of filth and perversion. And this uh, Newsweek 1979 commentary, Disco is a, uh, Music is a Call for Gays to Come Out of the Closet. That's what Disco was about. And this is uh, from Hole in Our Souls, a secular book about the history of music. It says, for the heyday of Disco was also the heyday of recklessness in the gay male lifestyle it cannot be denied that many gay men saw disco as the theme music of their collective orgy and according to the newsboys let's sing some disco let's be disco let's you know that's the church the church and disco clubs same thing according to jody davis of the newsboys wicked deception one thing after another seeing how this all comes together in this web of deception see through this medium using a movie like this Satan is able to connect you with counterfeit Christians who promote their counterfeit gospel and promote this idea that you can be a uh, uh, lesbian and sodomite affirming Christian and abortion affirming Christian. You can be an idol worshiper and a fornicator and full of all kinds of perversion and you can have that gospel connect you to idolatrous religions because of the creators again so through this medium Satan's connecting people to idols satanic music false religion universalism all these things are connected he just creates one degree of separation from all of this wicked deception but you say i'm not getting sucked into that i'm not getting deceived by all that oh i i know these actors are wicked and the creators are wicked and musicians and the music acts and all this all this wicked stuff connected with it oh sure but i'm not going to get deceived into that and i can enjoy just watching the movie with my family and i can me i i i wake up it's not all about you you're writing the paycheck you're putting your money in the offering plate oh well i'll just watch it on dvd then you're still helping. They need you. If you don't watch the filth, they then then they can't make their money and make another one and so on and so forth. And by the way, you're commanded to reprove the works of darkness and have no fellowship. Have no fellowship. No fellowship, no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove them. How are you going to reprove it? How are you going to help the ignorant people who are going to investigate the pleasure of idols? How are you going to help 
the ignorant people who don't know any better but to follow these wicked deceivers. How are you going to help them to tell them to stay away from it, but you're going to enjoy it? How can you do both? Because you're commanded to do the first part, reprove it. You're commanded to. And by the way, do you think it's okay? You're serving God. Jesus Christ is your Lord. You're honoring Jesus Christ. And you think it's okay for his enemies to pretend that they're not his enemies? Do you think it's okay for the children of Satan to pretend that they're not children of Satan? Do you think that's okay with God? You're endorsing this whole filthy, satanic mindset by supporting this. You remember the scripture that we read in the beginning about give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Why don't you give the pearl to the swine? Because they trample it under their feet. They trample it under their feet. That's why you don't give what is holy to the dogs and the pearl to the swine. You know, he's going to go to this movie premiere. He's going to be signing autographs about serving Jesus Christ. And then he's going to go talk about this filth up on stage over and over and over again and serve Satan. And what you are doing when you pay the money and you tell the people they should engage in this filthy entertainment, you're giving the pearl to the swine and you're helping them trample it. When you're, fi you're financing this operation, people, if you're paying for this, you're financing the operation of Satan, of this web of deception. You think, would it be okay with, with you? If Anton LaVey had the lead role in, in this film, I know, yeah, he's dead and in hell now. What about uh, Gilmore, the, the current head of the Church of Satan? This is the founder, if you don't know who this is, the founder of the Church of Satan. What if uh, he played the role of the street preacher? Like... Uh, DeLeroy, whatever his name is. I mean, that guy's in all kinds of wicked, filthy, blasphemous, profanity, spewing movies. He's not fit to play a street preacher. You're not supposed to play one anyway. You either are one or you're not. You say, oh, you know, you're going too far there with the Anton LaVey thing. Do you think... Do you think these people are serving a different God here? You think these people are serving a different God here? Is Anton LaVey's God different from the lesbian promoter? And then again, people say, oh, but it's, but that there was so much, there was this good and that that good and and there there was truth there there was truth in there you know what you're saying you got the the hook the line and you're saying oh but the nutritional value there's so much protein in worms don't you know how good worms are there's there's so much value in this worm it has amino acids and antioxidants in the worm and all that nutrition, it's worms are very nutritious. It's not the worm. It's, it's the hook that's the problem. It's this barb that's going to get stuck in your jaw. And this line 
that sucks you into the idols. You get it? And these Christians, professing Christians, keep talking about how good the worm is. As if the hook doesn't matter. It's the hook, people. It's the hook. You have to put... how How's Satan going to... What, what's he going to do? Just put the hook out there? You think he's just going to put the hook out there? He has to have he has to have the bait. The bait, people, the bait. You don't swallow the hook without the bait. Of course, there's going to be some kind of truth or some deceptive, twisted form of seemingly uh, uh, valuable truths of some kind. I mean, what do you think they're going to do? Put up Baphomet? Booga, 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 what's your worship the devil? Evil, 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 worship the devil. Wake up, people. You think they're just going to come right out with it? No, they're got, they got to have the bait over the hook. I mean, what do you think? What do you think, Satan? Did Satan show up like this in the in the Garden of Eden? Eden? Say, boogie, boogie, boogie. I'm no boogeyman. I'm evil. Evil, evil, evil. Ooh, boogie, 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 boogie. To Adam and Eve? Yeah, you think they would have eaten the fruit if he did that? No. He was subtle, just like he is with these filthy movies and the so-called Christian entertainment because you know what it is? The thorns. This is what it is, folks. These are the thorns. And you can even get some pretty flowers on the thorns. You remember what Jesus said about the one sown among the thorns? And the lusts of other things entering in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. The lusts of other things entering in. The lusts of other things choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. There are several different things he gives here, but the lust of other things, these lustful things of the wicked entertainment world, enter in. And it's all Satan's elaborate system of thorns. His elaborate system of thorns. See, when everybody hears the gospel, all of the new hearers of the gospel come in. He has his welcoming wagon of thorns just waiting for you. He has all of the thorns, the, the false religion, the, the fascinating actors and musicians, and all of the things that he uses that you're already accustomed to being entertained by. So, that's what he puts together, is this whole network here. And chokes out the word with his thorns. So, let me ask you, professing Christian, you're going to continue to write the paycheck? You're going to continue to finance the operation? You're going to continue to tell everybody... What a great review and high marks you're giving this movie. Are you going to stop this wicked, filthy deception from creeping into your life and polluting the lives of others? Stand up, rebuke and reprove and expose the unfruitful works of darkness like you're commanded to. And we could, quote, send Hollywood the message like people have been saying over and over again. They say, we need to send Hollywood a message. And then what they mean by that is that they need to give us some Christian movies. No, we need to send Hollywood a message, repent or perish. 
and then send the message to these ignorant people being led astray by this when they say see their favorite actors and musicians and all these things and then they follow along with their example getting choked out with thorns and dying and going to hell all the while saying well Billy Graham told me I had the hope of Jesus Christ well Sybil Shepherd, I mean she promotes lesbianism I could be a Christian and promote lesbianism and abortion like her. Newsboys, oh, they love satanic rock music as well. Nothing wrong with me listening to satanic music. But see, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 says, They'll all be damned who take who had pleasure in unrighteousness. So throw out the unrighteousness in your life. Repent. If you're a professing Christian who's been promoting this filthy, wicked deception, bust out the sackcloth and ashes post-haste. Get in your prayer closet. Get down on your knees. Repent and start warning people to separate themselves from this wicked generation. Do what you've been commanded to do. For the love of God, for the sake of Christ and the gospel, for the love of your neighbor who's perishing. To the Lord Jesus Christ be all the glory forever and ever. Amen.